NDAs tend to basically hold back what you want to say, especially when you're working on what, something that you created. And I said this before, if you want to create something, a movie, a TV series, an animation, do it yourself. Because Hollywood will not treat you right. They will not. They will take your product. And the thing about it is, as the great Orson Welles says, one thing about this in this country, unless, you, unless you're going to finance yourself, you don't really own your product when it comes to these networks. We've heard this from Cartoon Network. We've heard it from Warner Brothers. We've heard this uh, from Disney. Uh, you know, many different companies that are in this business that create all this uh, TV series and films and stuff like that. And some of them do make some good money out there. But the original creators are left out. And I'm going to tell you a tale of one creator that we're just now finding out how he was treated in the industry. As I said before, many a times, do this yourself. Do it. You can make money. You, there is money out there. There are those who have been making money crowdfunding this situation. No, you're not going to make millions of dollars, but you can make a good business out of it. So there are those who have been doing it for quite some time now, especially in the comic book industry, animation. There are others that are doing the business that basically Hollywood wants to grab up and take control of understand this there is good good film and tv out there programming stories that are made that you will can enjoy you've seen a lot of it on youtube you know that for quite some time now and other social media sites on there but there was one and i didn't get to see this and maybe i should because i love good animation and then i heard this was a decent animated animated out there uh it is kubo and the two strings and this was created by shannon tyndall and uh we're going to read this into this, this is off of Car cartoon brew who's reporting this this is the first time on there and jamie lang put this report out because we're just finding out about this this is something that happened a while back and we're just now learning the the truth behind it all Kubo and the Two Strings creator Shannon Turner took to Twitter over the weekend to re-encount the nightmare experience of being replaced as director on Kubo and the Two Strings. According to Tyndall, who's currently a showrunner at Netflix, the Kubo story started in 2001 when he began imagining the story of a one-eyed boy who made a magical art that could heal his mother. The Narcissus narrative was especially personal to Tyndall at the time as he had just met his future mother-in-law who had dementia. Like Kubo's mother in the film, she suffered from memory loss. Tyndall, who was also surrounded himself with Japanese folk tales at the time and the circumstances of his life melded with those influences into the earliest versions of Kubo and his mother, we hit it off immediately, Tyndall, Tyndall recalled of those early days spent with his future mother-in-law and the story of a woman trapped in her mind, taking care by her child, kind of merged with all these folk tales that I've been reading. Over time, the idea evolved into a story which Tyndall pitched to Lakia. Within weeks of the pitch, Tyndall received an offer and development and began in earnest. I was insanely excited, the idea, and was wildly, ext extremely personal, and someone was going to pay me to develop and eventually direct it. Amazing, right, he recalled. Tindall began to work with writer Mark Hames, which did uh, Nimona, Los Ali, and Ultraman, on a screenplay. It was a dream, pure heaven, uh, remember Tindall. The small team worked on the project, put together a screenplay, a 17-inch character lineup, a paper sculpture of Hanzo made by his wife, and an anima animaniac. Uh, many of those assets appeared in the video uploaded to YouTube in 2017 by Daniel Hashimo, who worked with Tyndall on the animatic of the film's opening sequence. 
According to Tindall, the studio quickly fell in love and greenlit the project. Several months later, uh, first screening was hosted somewhat not far from the, the film you saw in theaters. Tindall explained the studio liked what they saw enough to send Tindall to L.A. to direct the first voice screening. All seemed well, but it wasn't. Not at all, Twindle tweeted. There were signs, things I should have seen, but I was in it and loving it. A long sh story short, after nearly two years of work, I was removed as the director. Removed from something that came so deep from my heart and if, and if sick nearly broke me. The experience really took a toll on T Tyndall's mental and physical health, but the credits of many people who worked on Kubo with, with keeping him afloat during the darkest time in his uh, career, uh, that took my stubbornness to make something else, he added. Eventually, after the series fit and started, he was able to get back to the place he wanted to be, professional creativity. He was currently a writer and director on Netflix Ultraman feature, and his executive producer show running of the of the upcoming hybrid series Lost Ali, directed by Peter Ramsey. Kubo and the Two Strings released in the U.S. in August in 2016, as like Lakia Studios head Travis Knight uh, featured directorial debut. The film, bo the film boasts is exceptional 90, 97% tomato meter uh, score on Rotten Tomatoes and was nominated for two Oscars. Animated film and achievement in visual effects and won the BAFTA for best animated feature among a dozen other lofty, lofty kudos. In the end, Tyndall got a story credit on the film and his Megan wife Tyndall got a paper art credit as well. I share this not from anger or spite, Tyndall explained. I am exceedingly thankful that someone as personal as Kubo was released and I still recognized him as a, the child. I had imagined that's a blessing. I share this as a story of hope. He summed up the moral story with word of warning, a word of hope, and an offer to anyone else who feels that they have the rug pulled from underneath them. Don't let other people, corporations, or setback get in the way of your stories. People want to hear them. They want to see them. We're the ones with the dreams that people want to experience. That is powerful. Know that, embrace it, and if you want to chat, I'm around. He finished. And the thing about it is, he is absolutely correct. I always keep saying it. You know, make it yourself. Make it yourself. Do it yourself. You can do it. The abilities that you have now, the equipment, the um, software, it's not expensive as, as it was before. Some of it's free out there. You know, I, I hear at Man Man With The Show and also at Cutic Cast and 364 Studios, uh, we use DaVinci Resolve. We use the free version. You know, eventually, like I said, eventually we may decide to spend it when we have the budget and get the full version. But the thing about it is, for right now, it works fantastic. I can do a lot with it. I can do a full feature film with this. You know, there's a couple of add-ons I could throw onto the side into it, and it will work. This, you know, this is a great piece of software. You know, uh, do get it. I've gotten other people to get into it, and they love working with it. It is fantastic. I mean, for those Adobe users on there, uh, if you're you're stuck on Adobe and you love Adobe, get DaVinci just for the color grading. You can switch in back and forth on it. Uh, it allows you to, you know, bring bring the um, Adobe Premiere into, you know, the uh, project into color grading, and you could send it right back into uh, Adobe, you know, when you're finished with it. Because the color grader is top notch, the audio is top notch. Uh, right now, their version of After Effects um, is, is growing, it's getting stronger and stronger. There's a lot of wipes, fades, adjustments, there's so much you can do with this. The editing is fantastic. I can do quick edits on this. I mean, that is fantastic on there. And the thing is, there's a lot more other softwares uh, to help out there. Companies like Daz 3D and many others that offer great resources to you that is out there. 
you know, and as far as camera work, you can use your phone these days. The quality of a, like an iPhone these days is just as good as any top notch camera out on the marketplace itself. You know, so we hope that uh, Shannon get get some really good deals out there and hopefully that he'll create his own studio because that's what you got to do. Create your own studio, you know. Kick it up a notch, get out there, crowdfund it, and people will enjoy your product. You don't need Hollywood. You know, fuck Hollywood, fuck these studios, do it yourself, create, be creative, and people will find you. Very important that a director in America, particularly, mm -hmm. be his own producer, you know, mm -hmm. because under American and English law, we don't have rights. Mm -hmm. over our work, which you enjoy in countries like Belgium mm -hmm. and uh, France and Italy and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, the artist has a certain proprietary mm -hmm. uh, right over his work.